Stroke Awareness Month. That's coming up in May, so in a few days. The CDC says someone in the U.S. suffers a stroke every 40 seconds. Back in 2020, 16% of deaths from cardiovascular disease happened, all because of a stroke. So this Wellness Wednesday, Dr. Andre Ferdue from Hillcrest is here to talk about the signs and risks of stroke. Dr. Ferdue, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Uh, let's start with the basics. What are the common signs of a stroke? Well, I think it's important for folks to keep in mind the, uh, the moniker be fast. So be fast, B stands for balance. So if someone is having difficulty with their balance falling to one side or the other, um, E stands for eyes, so loss of vision, double vision, blurry vision. Uh, F stands for face, so asymmetry of the face. Um, um, a stands for arm or appendage, so you can have arm or leg weakness. Sometimes we see face, arm, and leg weakness. Uh, S stands for speech, so slurring your words or not understanding speech or uh, not being able to generate speech. And T stands for time, so uh, we have a very short window that we can work within if somebody's having an acute stroke where we can give them certain medications through an IV that can help to dissolve a stroke. Doesn't work in all cases, but works in roughly about 40% of cases. And then we have up to a 24 hour window if someone is a candidate to have a mechanical thrombectomy or have the, the blood clot physically removed from the brain. Okay, and if someone is having a stroke, will they display all of those signs or could it be just a few of them? It, it, it's usually just a few of them. Uh, the more signs that you are demonstrating, usually the worst the stroke is. Um, you know, the, the, the biggest challenge that we have is getting patients in in a timely fashion. So often someone will wake up and they may have some subtle symptoms and think I must be tired, so yeah. let me go back to bed, uh, which is one of the worst things that you could possibly do. So if there's ever a thought, anything out of the ordinary, please come in as quickly as you can to give us the opportunity to treat you. And then there are times that the symptoms will go away and then we can look at what the risk factors are at that particular point to hopefully adjust for that for the future. And speaking of the risk factors, um, can we get into more detail about that especially when people should speak to their doctor yeah. about when they might be at risk for this? Well, when you look at uh, the, the list of risk factors, high blood pressure or hypertension will increase your risk about four times higher than someone who doesn't have hypertension. So we're going to compare to an individual same age, same demographic. Um, a, uh, cardiac arrhythmias like atrial fibrillation is about a four to six time higher risk. Diabetes is a two time higher risk. Uh, elevated cholesterol is about one and a half to two time risk and smoking is a two time uh, two times higher risk so what we typically see is a patient that has hypertension diabetes high cholesterol smoking they may have sleep apnea when you add all of those risk factors up together they may have a 10 to 12 times higher risk of having a stroke compared to someone who doesn't have those risk factors so it gets always gets back to see your doctor regularly okay and regularly depends on the individual it may be every three months it may be every six months it may, may be every year uh, and be compliant on your medications you know the relationship that doctors and patients have it's it used to be driven by the physician now it's driven by the patient so if you and your physician don't necessarily agree there needs to be more communication to get you on the same page we don't want patients to hurt themselves because they don't necessarily understand or believe in their treatment plan okay and then really quickly we're running out of time mm -hmm. what can people do to lower their risk a few things well a few things uh, one is exercise uh, you know what you don't have to work out uh, you don't have to start training for a marathon it may be a matter of walking three days a week for 30 minutes uh, eating fresh fruits and vegetables uh, trying to stay away from fatty foods um, seeing your doctor regularly uh, and it's it's always the, the mental aspect also plays a role uh, for people to keep their keep their minds mentally active. It also helps to keep the body mentally active. Okay, good tips, Dr. Ferdue. Thank you again so much. Appreciate your time. It's a pleasure.